Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put on poor news. With us today, the guy who's smiling, he's got great reason, Kelvin Burton, Investor Relations at American Creek Resources, trades on the TSX Venture under the stock symbol AMK. What's the big news? First, let's talk about who American Creek is. A lot of you know the story. Some of you are going to be new because we see what's happened in the markets of late. American Creek, technically speaking, has an impressive portfolio of high potential gold properties uh, in BC's prolific Golden Triangle, one of the richest areas of mineralization in the world. Their flagship, Treaty Creek, is a joint venture with Tudor Gold. Uh, we know all about that. It's potential for a world-class uh, mine over there. Eric Sprott has invested twice and beneficially owns 19.9% of Tudor. And he said, uh, sorry, 19.9% of, of Tudor. It certainly looks like they have 20 million ounces and they could easily get to 30 or 40 or 50 million ounces of gold. That's what Eric Sprott said, July 4th, July 24th, 2020. If that was everything, then that would be a fantastic story. But on top of that, here's the headline we're going to talk about. American Greek Resources complete spin out of shares of Stinger Resources. Here to talk about all that, Kelvin, welcome back. George, great to be here. Uh, great reason to have you here. A lot of stuff going on. <laughs> this spin out is amazing news, but before we get to that, we know the flagship is Treaty Creek, your JV yeah. with Tudor Gold. So let's address, let's address that elephant in the room first. What's the status of, uh, of Treaty Creek? Sure thing, actually. It's funny you say elephant because everyone calls that elephant country up there because everything's so big and it, this certainly has the potential to be something uh, world-class size. So uh, we are in the stage right now where uh, uh, the operator of the company, which is Tudor Gold, uh, they're working with p &E Mining out of Toronto and they're working on a resource calculation right now. It is the maiden resource calculation and Unfortunately, I don't have any insider information that, <laughs> that I can give anyone. So we don't know exactly uh, when. We know that it's, it'll probably be sometime soon. And we're not sure of exactly how big or what grade it's going to be. But uh, just given the drilling that's taken place and the holes that we have and the information that uh, Tudor's putting out, it certainly looks like it has the potential to be a world-class uh, deposit up there and, and potentially become a mine as well. So one of, the, one of the things though that I think is really important for everyone to understand, and I keep reading articles about this, George, and it keeps coming up in interviews and that type of thing. And that is that, you know, there's a lot of factors that affect gold and sometimes we'll discuss that topic. But if we were to throw away, you know, Biden and bailouts and the Fed and Bitcoin and the markets and everything else and just throw it right out, here's what the gold market looks like. And that is that producers are making more money than they ever have in the past because the, the price has shot up and their costs haven't followed that yet. And the reality is they're producing all they can and they're producing far faster than what the ounces in the ground are being discovered at. And so there's this big crunch coming up where there aren't a lot of uh, new discoveries taking place. In fact, that's actually one of the interesting things about this scenario is when gold markets were down, a lot of exploration was spent on areas that uh, are known resources and they just kind of expand those. So there was very little new discovery out there. And then the third factor that's going on and that's that a lot of the deposits are becoming smaller and therefore their shelf life is becoming shorter as well. And so a lot of them are kind of five to 11 years now, that type of range. And a lot of the big deposits, which would be considered generational deposits, aren't being discovered. There's certainly not many new ones at all. In fact, I was uh, just reading an article here that I'll quote to you in, in, in just one second concerning that. But it's the fact that uh, the gold storm, which is a single zone on the Treaty Creek deposit. That's uh, the scary part, right? Just one Yeah, it's just one. It's just on one. Treaty <laughs> Creek. And Eric Spott's talking the way he's talking about it. So, you know, it, it has the potential to become a generational type of deposit. And, and that's what we're hoping for here. And so it, it would be one of the ones that would attract a lot of attention from producers for this reason. And I'm just going to actually read this here. This was by Kevin Murphy from S&P Global, a principal research analyst. And it says, 
While there's still plenty of gold assets to be developed, the lack of new major deposits being discovered means that the project pipe pipeline is increasingly short of large, high quality assets needed to replace the aging major gold mines. And that's exactly what's happened. There's been <clears throat> huge deposits, been around forever, and they're coming down to their last gasps. And there needs to be ones to replace that of, of e equivalent size or something large like that. And so that's why, you know, the Treaty Creek and specifically the gold storm looks so appealing right now. And, and this resource calculation to be clear, right? This is initial or maiden resource. You haven't found the edges of the gold storm yet, have you? No, we haven't. <laughs> you know, we think, we think the hanging wall is, is the sulfur at thrust fault, but outside of that, you know, it's, it's it just in uh, the last pr press release put out uh, by Tudor Gold says, you know, it's open to the north, it's open to the northeast and the east and the southeast. <laughs> and unbelievable. So, so yes, this, this is, um, as, as Ken Conkin likes to say, this is chapter one. Right when this resource oh. calculation of a very good book, he says. So, <laughs> so it'll be interesting, and maybe just to give uh, our investors um, a look at how big this could be. I've I've sent you an image there of Toronto, and and I know some of you may have seen this before, but it's worth noting again if you could just bring that one up. Yep. And and really, what it's showing is downtown Toronto, a place a lot of us have visited uh, numerous times or, or live close to. And, and in this case, it's showing the, uh, the length and the width of the gold storm as it stands right now. So the length is about 1,250 meters. And on this image, that's all the way from Rogers Stadium, which is a little street called Blue Jays Way, all the way over to Young Street, uh, further east. That's about 1,250 meters. And if we run along the rail, rail line there, which is just behind Front Street, and then we go out to the, the lake, Ontario, Lake Ontario, that's the entire area. That, that's a huge area. <laughs> and again, we, we don't know how big it's going to be from there. So that's its width and its length. And then I sent you another image, George, if you, if you want to put that one up. Yep, which one? And this is one that we, that we just uh, recently put together. I, I, I like to show uh, holes compared to the CN Tower because it's about as twice as tall as everything else in Toronto. And Toronto has a lot of skyscrapers. Um, this one here goes beyond that. So in this case, we have the Empire State Building and we have the uh, Burj Khalifa in the middle, which is, of course, the world's tallest tower. And, and then the, the CN Tower off to the right. It's Man, actually does that give a perspective, right? For everyone who's watching this image, this gives it, an incredible it does. perspective. And the, the hole just to the left of the CN Tower there, that's the one that, that Ken Konkin told me that, you know, he almost fell off his chair when he read that one. You know, and, and, and that one's 563 meters of, of just under a gram gold equivalent, right? 0.981. It doesn't yeah, exactly. So <laughs> he's like, holy smokes, I can't believe how consistent this is. And then look, look at what he's look what he's found since. <laughs> right. You know, we, we have uh, and all of these, these aren't the deepest. Well, well, the one to the right of the Empire State Building, 0.999. Grams like, per ton over exactly. 531 meters. That's you know. And why do they just call that one? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> it's the answer to that. Sounds better. Sounds better. Then way off to the right, we have one that's about 550 meters, and and it's about a, a gram gold equivalent as well. And and what's important to note is that every everything on this sheet is, is close to a gram gold gold equivalent. Okay. And um, we have holes that are a little bit lower grade. But Calvin, correct me if I'm wrong. We also got the one just to the left of the Burj Khalifa there, 1.16 grams a ton over 930 meters, right? Exactly, we do. And, and actually what's, what's really powerful um, is some of these actually have some really strong um, zones that are close to surface in that 300 zone. So on this deposit, the, the first 300 meters or so we call the 300 zone and it's, it's the richest part. So as part of the, uh, the hole that you were just mentioning there, you know, there's uh, about close to 3.3 grams per ton over about 82 meters. Just, just fantastic, right? It's, it's, it's crazy. So it's exciting. And, and, and look so, at this way as a great way to kind of visualize it. Exactly. The, the, the depth there, right? And um, one thing I will mention, though, and that's that when it comes to a resource calculation, um, they don't necessarily 
include all of the gold that's there. So, so as an example, you know, this kind of concept that the the gold storm is about you know 1200 meters by 600 meters by 700 meters deep well the reality is we actually have some holes going down to 13 and 1400 meters and they're still in mineralization right so they, they might not actually include all of this it's up to them what they're going to do and we also know that whenever you have a resource calculation they have different cutoff grades as well so it depends on what kind of cutoff grade they use and and, and how much of this area they use and everything else as to what we actually get but I think this gives, gives us a good sense of how big it is right now. And as we know, it's open and it could get bigger. And then it, we haven't even talked about, you know, the, the perfect storm yet. And, and there's another image here uh, that if you could bring up. And, and again, uh, Ken Conkin, who's, who's the head geologist for Tudor Gold, who's developing this. Um, you know, he, he calls it the, the, the pearl necklace, right? Just really big pearls, he says. <laughs> and so you can see on this image, starting at the bottom, you have the Kerr, the Selfridge, the Mitchell, the Iron Cap. And if you go up two more, you have the Gold Star. It's exactly where it should be in this sequence of about every two and a half to three kilometers yep. apart. There's another major deposit. None of them are the same. They're all very, very good. <laughs> so, um, and then if the, uh, well, the perfect storm. It's a great looking trail, I'll tell you that. It is. Great looking path. <laughs> The, the perfect storm, of course, is kind of halfway between the Iron Cap, which is owned by Seabridge, and that's where the border is uh, be between Treaty Creek and, and Seabridge Gold and, uh, and uh, uh, the Gold Storm. And so, and again, this, this deposit, or it's not a deposit yet, it's a zone. Um, you know, again, it's right along the sulfur thrust fault. It has the same bedrock geology, volcanic rock that's there. It has... Uh, the same kind of specific ge geology of, of turbidites and, and, and this type of geoplastic sequencing is what they call it. Um, it has the magnetotelluric survey showing that there should be something there. It has a huge magnetic anomaly showing that, that it could be something really quite special. And, and last year, don't forget, they, they did drill it uh, in three, three holes, but it wasn't really where they wanted to drill it because they didn't have permits for that. Well, they have that now. And even where they weren't, you know, drilling where they wanted to be, they, they hit wide bands of mineralization in all three holes. So we're, we're excited about that. That'll hence, be hence chapter one. <laughs> and, and there's chapter one for you. So we, we look forward to that coming out. And in the meantime, we can focus on our, our other projects uh, in Stinger. So quickly before we jump on to Stinger, which is mm -hmm. itself amazing news, what was the last official word? on timing for the resource calculation from Tudor? Did they say any, they, they, just for new people watching, was there a range given? Did they say uh, yeah, sometime in Q1 was. or what was, the, what, was yeah. the, what was the official word given? So the, the press people... release came out on, on uh, January the 7th and uh, they said the next few months. All right. So, you know, maybe Q1 or something like that. I, I don't expect it to go into summer and that type of thing. All you know, right. so hopefully be not because we've all been sitting be on, uh, you know, pins and needles for a while, but, you know, <laughs> it's good. It's good. Okay. So we'll move on from that because anything yeah. more than that would get you put in. Actually, you don't even know it anyway. So That's I right. can grill you with a heat lamp and there's nothing you'd be able to tell us. <laughs> um, all right. If that was all, the interview ended right there. Kelvin, great. This is amazing. Can't wait, right? Done. Wow. And who wouldn't be happy with the interview? But now we've got, you put out the press release. I read the head headline earlier uh, You uh, for Stinger. Yes. The spin out of Stinger. Uh, you finally come to what was a long process for some people. I've been through it before because Agoracom is Agoracom. It oh, yeah. wasn't that long, but I'm sure for a lot of people, and maybe even for you guys, it felt like long. Uh, but we're finally here. <laughs> We, we are. It has been a long journey and we're excited to finally be here. Um, you know, we, we've been planning this for quite some time. We were waiting for the market to be right and for our situation to be right in terms of the advancement of our projects and so forth. And really the heavy lifting started as, as early as, um, you know, last spring, early last spring. So it, it's been a good three quarters of a year or so, something like that behind the scenes. It's actually pretty good. You know, uh, uh, to make this happen. And, and, you know, George, there was actually a much cheaper and faster way of doing this 
but we chose kind of the long hard road for for a very specific reason and that is because we wanted to keep the assets uh within the possession of all of our shareholders and so you can spin it out into a new company quite easily but then everyone has to buy back in to the new company to own part of it and so there's there's two factors that 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 were important to us. One was that everyone gets a pro rata share. So if you own 1% of you know, American Creek, you would own 1% of Stinger Resources. And, right. and, and we've done that. And then as the press release says, it's about 11%. So if you own you know, 100 American Creek shares, you'll own about 11. Yeah, that was great. When I saw that number, I thought that was very fair, yeah. great. Yeah, and then and then the second thing that we can get into a, a little bit more in just a minute here, and and that is that um, usually when you start a new company, well, you always have to have a qualifying project, and you have to have enough capital to be able to run a program on your qualifying project for at least one year, and and typically what happens is companies will do an IPO, initial public offering, to raise the capital to do that. Well, when that happens, it actually dilutes out the existing shareholders. And in this case, we don't have to because American Creek has given Stinger money and we can discuss that in just a minute here in terms of what Stinger is going to get. Right. But, you know, they'll really be in a position where Stinger shouldn't have to raise money for a minimum of two years and, and possibly longer. You know, if there's a really good reason to, we would still look at it, but it's, it's not up against, uh, you know, no guns to our head or anything else. We should be able to run very good programs and what we think will be very successful programs in Stinger. So before we get into the details of Stinger, is there anything that American Creek AMK shareholders have to do to get their Stinger shares? Yeah, great, great question. It's been a popular question. <laughs> so, um, and unfortunately, it's a very easy, simple answer. And so anyone who has not bought directly from the company and has a certificate in hand, so anyone that's bought on the market, whether that's in the States or in Canada, um, all your shares will be automatically converted over into the new shares. So you won't know any difference. And any Stinger shares that you'd be getting will all be automatically put into your account. So you don't have to have anything sent to you and then you got to deal with your broker and everything else. It'll just automatically happen. So that's about, you know, 99% of our shareholders. So if you got a hundred, if you got a thousand shares sitting in your account, no matter, how, no matter how you got them, if they're now sitting in your account, you're going to get 110 shares ballpark of Stinger. If you have a, if, if you have 100 American Creek shares in your account, what you'll get is you'll get a new 100 American Creek shares to replace the old 100. And then right. you'll also get 11 Stinger shares. Right. Yeah, I use 1,000, use 100, but yeah, that's the idea. Oh, so sorry, you don't have to do um, anything. Well, you, don't have to do it. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. It all just gets, it all gets nice laid out for you. Okay. That's correct. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, dealing with, well, how exactly is my broker going to do that? And, you know, what tax implications could there be or whatever? You know, we're not actually qualified to give advice as far as that's concerning. So uh, we, we ask that people just talk to their accountant. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to be some kind of a, you know, it's, yeah. not, it's never tax free, right? Wish it could. Yeah, be. so <laughs> talk to their it's account. Be some kind of a dividend, something, something. So, however, however for everybody, everyone right. figures that and part out. On their own. And, and for those who actually do have physical shares, then um, all they need to do is uh, there is a what's called a letter of transmittal, and that can be found on CDAR.com. And you look up American Creek and you look up our documents. And on uh, November 5th, there's a document there and they just print that off and, and fill it out and send in their shares to what's called a transfer agent. And any of those guys can to just get a hold of me and I'm happy to give them the information right. to transfer That's agent. Correct. Actually, it's actually on the press release and everything else as well. So, um, so there's really no worries there. Everyone should be fine. So let's, and by the way, uh, I, I'll say that on behalf of everybody. I think I'm speaking on behalf of everybody, uh, all shareholders. Thanks for what you guys have done. Uh, I don't think any of us really knows how hard it was or you know, the, 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 you know, the length of time it really took and behind the scenes. But I think I speak on behalf of everybody, you know, for you and the guys that, that got Darren, obviously, yeah. uh, you know, thanks for, for getting that done. Because uh, A, it's great, B, it just unlocks more value. So let's talk about that side, which is, mm -hmm. let's talk about reviews, review with us, what Stinger gets in the split with okay. American Creek. <laughs> uh, I love it. It's going to be set up really, really well. So 
Um, to begin with, it'll get about, well, it will get exactly two and a half million dollars from American Creek in the kitty to start with. Um, and and actually fantastic. When, it, it is. And, and when you actually look at the value of, you know, in, in, even a shell on the, the TSX, I think it's worth a couple million dollars to begin with, right? Just, just to have a company, but it'll be that plus two and a half million dollars in, in the kitty. Um, and then it also gets uh, about one, just over 1.4 million shares of our partner, Tudor Gold. And uh, right now, in today, to today's market, it's, it's worth about four and a half million dollars. But we think it's going to be much higher than that. <laughs> and so, and you're um, talking about another company, so that's okay. You, you I like can't to tell you what I think it's you're going to have your opinion on what another company is going to be doing. But, but I do think it, we, we do think it's going to go up in value considerably, uh, obviously, because they're our partner on, on Treaty Creek. And so, uh, that's a huge asset, uh, to be able to have there. And then, of course, uh, uh, Stinger will also get, um, you know, our offices, our buildings, field equipment, that type of thing, you know, which is, which is certainly valued over, over half a million dollars. And, um, and then there's something else that they get that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of. And, and this is pretty cool, too. So uh, American Creek still has some outstanding warrants, and those will all be used up this year. So after this year, there won't be any more warrants in American Creek. And if those warrants are in the money, and we're assuming they're going to be, then those warrants will be exercised in about three or four times throughout the, this year. And 20% uh, of that money will go to American Creek and 80% of that money will go to Stinger. Wow. And so uh, American Creek will still have, <clears throat> you know, a, a couple million dollars in the bank and uh, it'll get another about seven hundred thousand uh, dollars this year, without having to you know issue issue any more shares or anything else, and Stinger will get probably in the neighborhood of around um, two point eight million dollars more. Well, Stinger's going to really load up with cash, <laughs> shares, and Tudor, right? If anyone needs a loan, uh, <laughs> yeah, fast. <laughs> Uh, the cash man, Kelvin, the cash man, Burton <laughs> at Stinger will give you a loan with, you know, about six or seven or eight million dollars so the, by the end of the year, potentially. The important, the important concept, George, is that both companies are actually going to be set up very well. And neither company should really have to dilute in that type of thing for till at least through, you know, to the end of 2022. And we'll see how far. We, we go from there and, and, and what our expenditures are, but it's a great situation to be in. And of course, we haven't even talked about the most valuable assets going over to Stinger yet. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, all that was great. And don't worry, cash is fantastic. And all, but let's talk about the properties now that are going into Stinger because that's the value unlock, right? Yes. Treaty Creek was just so big that it was overshadowing some pretty great assets. Or exactly. what we think are some pretty promising assets. I shouldn't say great. I say very promising assets. Yeah, that, that's exactly what's happened here. So um, all, all but one other property um, is going into Stinger. So we're we're uh, leaving one for to, to explore and, and everything else um, uh, up in, in central BC for American Creek. And the other ones are going into Stinger. And... Uh, while there are a number of them, there's three that we're going to be focusing on. And the first one is the Dunwell mine. And this is one that a lot of our shareholders are familiar with. And I'm just going to review a couple things with it. So it's kind of showing a top down map of the area here. And the Dunwell mines uh, literally eight kilometers from the adit of the old past producing mine to the shipping port. It's literally that close. Six kilometers of that is along the highway that goes into Stewart, along with the power and everything else that runs right through the property. So logistically, it's fantastic. Um, there's a, a, a road that's already existing, you know, right off the highway, right up to the adit. And um, the bay, the highway's just running right yeah. by. Well, yeah, it runs through the property technically. Yeah. So, um, and and what you can see on this map as well is not only just our proximity to Stewart. But, but also to uh, another very well-known uh, company in the area called Ascot, a great company. They've had a lot of success. Um, they're reopening the old Silback Premier mine uh, just to the west of us, as you can see on the map. And then uh, a year or so ago, 
just over a year ago, they, they bought uh, IDM and, and the Red Chris deposit that they were working on. And that one is just east of us. So we're, we're kind of in, the, in between them because they'll be developing both of those. And uh, as you can see on this map, they've got great grades. It's a high grade system, that yeah. type of thing. Uh, on Dunwell itself, what we have is, it's called a poly uh, polymetallic system, meaning it has many different metals in it. The primary ones being gold, silver, lots of silver <laughs> and lead and zinc. And so uh, maybe if I, if I uh, switch the uh, images out, what we've done is we've, we've included some of the highlights. And so um, you can't see it on this map here, George. It's a historical high grade. Yes, that's right. And so um, th there's a lot of them here. And, and just looking down at here, um, these are some of the different areas or zones. And a lot of them correlate with each other in terms of being within a what's called the, the Portland Canal Fisher Zone and associated with faulting going on on the property. And some of these numbers are fantastic. Even just looking at the Dunwell mine itself, you can see that it averaged about 6.6 .6 grams per ton gold and 223 grams per ton silver, right? That's, you know, today's prices, that, that's about three and a half grams of gold. Well, uh, I don't know what that'll be later this year or the next year, but, you know, silver's, you know, gold moved quite well last year and silver's moving quite and, well. And holding nicely in that $1,800 range. By the way, just to talk quickly, if prices just stayed the same, because I know a lot of companies, there are a lot of companies coming out and saying, you know, if gold keeps moving, we get $3,000 gold and $50 silver. I mean, that would be great for Stinger, but you don't need those for Dunwall, correct? Oh, heavens no. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if everything stayed the same and you guys just kept expanding it, you'd be happy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this this would be what was considered high grade, I think, in, in, in anyone's case. Um, and uh, especially when you, you look down these numbers. So we do think that these different zones here do have a connection. And, and we have done some fantastic uh, geophysical uh, work uh, to it over the last uh, two years here. Um, and we, we ran a, a deep IP survey on it this last year. We did magnetics. We did a LIDAR survey, that type of thing. And so we're starting to see how these historic uh, uh, grades that you're looking at in these different spots correlate with the geology, with the geophysics and everything else and starting to paint a bigger picture here because we don't think it's just one little spot that's going to be good. We think we have potential for a large system here that actually runs over the better part of about five to six kilometers. And so we're, we're excited about the Dunwell. I, I don't really don't have to explain any of these numbers in front of you. No, no. <laughs> It's uh, very, very exciting. Um, we haven't been able to work on the Dunwell since we announced that we wanted to break out. I was just about to ask you that. Okay. So that's <laughs> and you, you can feel everybody saying, well, when's the work? <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, we were hoping to work on it last fall, but you know, the, the, once we announced we were doing a spin out, nothing's happened to it at all. For sure. And, yeah, that, that would only make things a lot more difficult, right? Because you have to keep revaluing and revaluing. So, right. so I guess you'll start sometime, you know, as soon as the weather kind of well, gets better. Actually, here's, here's one of the beautiful parts about it. And, and that is that um, the, the weather doesn't hold us up like it does in other areas because there's only two kilometers off the highway. They keep the highway open, right? And and we keep that road open. So, you know, the last time it, it, it um, it's had drill programs in, in, in the past in January kind of thing. So, uh, that, that shouldn't be a big problem for us. And we're excited about that. As far as, you know, advancing that, that type of thing, um, uh, Stinger will actually start trading here uh, sometime next week. We'll put out a press release about that. We don't have that date yet. And once it started trading, then we can come out with, okay, we've got a plan, right? And here's what it is. And here's oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. So, if you could start so, trading on March 4th, that'd be double bonus day because that's my birthday. Oh, hey, great. <laughs> <laughs> so sometime shortly after we actually start trading, then we can talk about a program on it and everything else. But the good news is we don't have to wait till you know, late spring or early summer like you do with a lot of the projects that are up there. So if um, 
if someone's watched right now and they don't own American Greek yet, or they own less than they wanted to, there's George, he owns a thousand shares. He'd rather own 10,000 shares. Uh, if George goes and buys American Creek stock in the open market, get, does he still get the stinger uh, spin out? Yes. Yeah. Before, as long as it's done before Wednesday. Yeah. So the 24th, I think is, is it is. So <laughs> Wednesday, the 24th at close, when, whenever that is for you in Canada. <laughs> uh, All right. So Wednesday, the 24th, no matter what, it's got to be, you got to do it for Wednesday, 24th. That's correct. And, and when you buy American Greek, I, personally, I think it's a great time to buy because it's just before the, you know, the maiden resource, before chapter one happens, <laughs> right? Um, and the resource calculation comes out. And then as an added bonus, you know, 11% of that will also go into, into Stinger as well. So they have right up until then. And then uh, once Stinger's up and going, then we'll have our own press releases and everything else. And we'll come out with plans for, uh, well, not, not only done well, we actually have, I'm just going to briefly mention two other properties for you here, George. Uh, we, we have more than that. Yeah. Uh, done well, obviously, is the probably the, the flagship it, for now. Yeah, it's what's called the qualifying project right. that you have to have uh, to be able to start a company. It's a great qualifying project. Um, and uh, the other two that I'm going to mention actually aren't in the Golden Triangle. We do have a, another one up in the Golden Triangle. But but the other two that I'm just going to mention briefly, uh, one's called uh, Gold Hill. And it's kind of the opposite corner of British Columbia. So this one, instead of the northwest corner, it's kind of the southeast corner, uh, quite close to our office, which is in southern Alberta. And that one there is 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 a company maker on its own. It, it really is. It, it, we believe that we hold the primary source for Canada's fourth largest placer deposit in history. Okay, so, that's saying something. Where the heck did that come out of nowhere? <laughs> so like well, you're saving that for the old, oh, by the way, George, yeah, at yeah, the very well, end as we're about to sign off, this is the little add-on. Well, <laughs> and, and we're not placer miners. And what's really fascinating, like literally this thing started like in 1864, 65, before Canada was Canada. And, and yet there's still guys commercially mining, you know, this six kilometer stretch of this river, which, which yielded about 48 tons of gold, 48 tons of gold. And they think that the majority of gold was gone before they ever started accounting for it because it was actually mined for about a year and a half before Colonel Steele showed up there. That's why there's a Fort Steele at Cranbrook. And in fact, it's the whole reason why there's a Cranbrook as well. Um, but, uh, and then when they did show up, you know, they wanted to tax everyone. So they, they think most of it actually went across the, the border, you know, into the States. Um, and uh, and so the, the the 48 tons is they're, they're thinking is is a portion of what was actually there, and so we're looking for the source. We, we believe we have uh, at least um, a significant portion of the source for that, and so we're excited to be able to get out there and and get working on that one as well, and and of course excellent logistics, everything else, you know, roads right on to it because it was uh, clear cut, you know, for forestry and all the rest of it, right near a uh, major highway, right near rail, right near, you know, the town of Cranbrook and, and everything else. So we're really excited about that. And I have one more for you, George. <laughs> and it, it does, this was called the Apple. The gold. second largest super gold mine in the world. <laughs> That's, so, what else do you got for me? And, and, and this Ample Gold Max is actually re really quite fascinating. As I like well. these names, Ample Gold Max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the Ample Gold Max, um, it's right near Lillooet, which is kind of more towards the western side of British Columbia. Uh, down in southern BC, and and again, this one is is like eight kilometers. I'm like, it, it's exactly the same distance to the town as our other one. <laughs> it's, but it's about eight kilometers. Um, the highway runs right through it, um, to south of Lillooet, and in, in this case, um, two things. Uh, one, it actually was a past producing mine, just like the Dunwell was, and and in this case, I, I just want to make sure I, I get this right here. Um, uh, it was about nine grams per ton gold. And the reason why it shut down was, was because their recovery rates way back in the day were so horrible that they were struggling to get 50% recovery rate on this, but they were still getting nine grams per ton uh, gold on it. And so there's uh, 
just a lot of super high grade showings for about three kilometers along Chaos Creek fault that's there and just tremendous potential on it. And so it's, it's kind of similar to the Dunwell mine in its history and it's high grade and everything, but just uh, located uh, a lot further south. And you know, Kelvin, we've been having a lot of fun on this interview and for good reason, it's a great, it's a great one for all shareholders in the company. Yeah. But you know, most of the 99% of the time you'd expect whoever's talking about their properties, like you are here going through Dunwell, Gold Hill, Ample Gold Max, mm. you know, to be very optimistic. And, but the fact of the matter is this, you guys through Treaty Creek have proven in the market and we'll, and we'll see officially, but it seems like you've proven the market that you guys know how to find great prospective projects. At well, the end of the day. So there's a lot of reason to be optimistic for all new shareholders of Stinger Resources uh, and current shareholders, obviously, of, of American Greek Resource who are getting yeah. those. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. And I think that means we're going to have you back on a bunch, right? Because we got the spin out happening. Then Maiden Resource at some point. We yes. don't know when. Then plans for Dunwell. Mm -hmm. And and, and then we're into the for spring and then, Apple Max. So yeah, it's going to be a great then, year for American people Creek. People get going like. again, right? Because they, they went in early last year. They were there at the beginning of May, right? And so that'll just keep flowing right through the summer and right through into next winter again. So be fantastic. Kelvin, congratulations to you and the guys, because a lot of people new to American Creek don't realize that, that you guys held on to Treaty Creek and even brought in new projects. You're in the darkest days of the industry back in 2015, when you couldn't give it away, nobody could, nobody cared. <laughs> but you guys had the foresight to say, we know what we got uh, and we're holding on and we're adding more and you went out and pieced together, done well and things like that. So that's really hats off to you guys because I think there are very few people in the world in this industry have the patience to, to get something like that done during the darkest days on, you know, everyone can, everyone's a superstar in a bull market. So yeah, exactly. You know, congratulations to you guys I, and what I you've do, done for shareholders. I do want to finish with this and I, I appreciate sure. your congratulations to us. Um, and I just want to say that we have a lot of shareholders who have been with us yep. for over a decade. They've been through <laughs> everything we've been through. And I just want to thank them as well that, you know, we're not a company without shareholders. And these guys have been through the ups and the downs and everything else as well. And it's starting to, uh, everyone has a smile now, right? When they call and they can see what's coming up and and they know that they're gonna be rewarded for hanging on as well. And, and so, I've been a shareholder since 2015, I think. So, you know. Yeah, we, yeah, we've had guys from 2004, I think was the yeah, first. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm a rookie compared to some of the, <laughs> you know, I just want to say that, but yeah, there's some shareholders who've been around for well past a decade and I'm so happy for all of them. It's yeah. really great to see all of them getting their just rewards and we'll see what the final payoff is because that's not up to us to say, nope. uh, but it's for everyone else to kind of watch and, uh, and, and can't wait to see how 2021 unfolds my man, because here we are near the end of February and there's a lot to smile about, like you said. You so congratulations. Guys. Thanks, George. To everybody at home, you've been watching or listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Kelvin Burton, Investor Relations over at American Creek Resources, trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol AMK and soon to be Stinger Resources. By the way, what's going to be the uh, symbol for Stinger? I don't know. It's STNG on the Venture Exchange, the TMX, uh, sorry, the, tr the Toronto Venture Exchange. And then uh, we don't know what the OTCBB will be yet uh, for people in the States, but uh, we're assuming that we'll find out very shortly once we start trading. More news to talk about, more great stuff to talk about. So do your due diligence, get to Agoracom, Take a look at the American Creek profile page there where we kind of summarize it for you because there's a lot. It's voluminous. So we've got a great summary, but then make sure you use the link to pop over to the American Creek Resources uh, website where they've got all the detail there for you. Do your due diligence. Don't say we didn't tell you so. Have a great day. See you next time. Take care.